start reading. Sh should I read Rangada? Yes, please. Yes. Chapter 2, The Integral Perfection. A divine perfection of the human being is our aim. We must know then first, what are the essential elements that constitute man's total perfection? Secondly, what do you mean by a divine as distinguished from a human perfection of our being? That man as a being is capable of self-development and of some approach at least to an ideal standard of per perfection which his mind is able to conceive, fix before it and pursue is common ground to all thinking humanity, though it may be only the minority who concern themselves with this possibility as providing the one most important aim of life. But by some, the ideal is conceived as a mundane change, by others, as a religious conversion. Small para, and he's telling us what the, um, what the integral perfection is. Okay, he's going to tell us that. I'm reading each sentence. A divine perfection of the human being is our aim. There can be a mundane perfection, but there can also be a divine perfection. So we must know then first, what are the essential elements that constitute man's total perfection? What do you mean by perfection? He will tell us. Secondly, what we mean by a divine as distinguished from a human perfection of our being. That man is a being, that man as a being is capable of self-development and of some approach at least to an ideal standard of perfection, which his mind is able to conceive, fix before it and pursue, is common ground to all thinking humanity, though it may be only the minority who concern themselves with this possibility, as providing the one most important aim of life. <clears throat> He's saying that the idea of perfection, the idea of progress, not perfection, but the idea of progress is common to everybody. And that we have discussed this already last time, that the progress can be material progress. Like in the physical world, you are having material progress in every way. Your mobile is a progress. Your car is a progress. Your airplane is a progress. All the, the TV is a progress. So that is common. Then you can have mental perfection, you can have education, then you can have spiritual perfection. So he's going to define us, define to us what is spiritual perfection. But by some, the ideal is conceived as a mundane change, by others as a religious conversion. So there are three things, a mundane change only. In the physical world, all these things that we just now spoke about, mobiles and TVs and cars, these are all mundane changes. Changes only in the physical world. The word mundane is clear. It comes from the French word monde, means the world. So, worldly change, physical change. By others, as a religious conversion, think more of God and go to the temple, and that is enough for many people. But spiritual perfection is something else that should be speak about. Okay, so. And very few think of that, he's saying. By, but by some, the ideal is conceived as a mundane change, by others, as a religious conversion. But he has not yet come to spiritual perfection. So, we read the next one. So, who will read the next one? Sunki read the first one. So, who will read the next one? Kilpa? I don't know who is on the line today. Because yes. just one minute, I, I, I'll see who. Ah, now I've got it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I can. Yes. Yes, you can. No? Then go ahead. They're all small paras. May, maybe many can read today. The mundane perfection. The mundane perfection. Now I know who's there on the line. The mundane perfection is sometimes conceived of as something outward social a thing of action, a more rational dealing with our fellow man and our environment. 
a better and more efficient citizenship and discharge of duties, a better, richer, kindlier, kindlier, and happier way of living with a more just and more harmonious associated enjoyment of the opportunities of existence. By others, again, a more inner and subjective ideal is cherished, a clarifying and raising of the intelligence, will and reason, a heightening and ordering of power and capacity in the nature, a nobler ethical, a richer aesthetic, a final emotional, a finer emotional, a much healthier and better governed vital and physical being. Sometimes one element is just almost to the exclusion of the rest. Sometimes in wider and more well-balanced minds, the whole harmony is envisaged as a total perfection, a change of education and social institution is the outward means adopted or an inner self-training and development is preferred as the true instrumentation or the two aims may be clear, clearly united. The perfection of the inner individual, the perfection of the outer living. So he's explaining here the mundane perfection. So we'll have a look at what he's saying. His analysis is so, he goes into every, talking of perfection, he talks about every perfection. Okay, so the mundane perfection is sometimes conceived of as something outward social, a thing of action, a more rational dealing with our phenomenon, fellow men and our environment, a better and more efficient citizenship and discharge of duties, a better, richer, kindlier and happier way of living with a more just and more harmonious associated enjoyment of the opportunities of existence. So if you look at each one, he is clubbing all the different types into the mundane perfection. So let's have a look very, very carefully what he's saying. First of all, I think outward, okay? It is something in the physical world. But there also there are many grades. First of all, social, okay? There are many social customs which are very, very, um, very uh, restrictive of social freedom. So that is more and more um, progresses there. So that is social freedom. One example which I can give is that prisoners should be treated kindly. Okay, This idea is there everywhere, but usually the prisoners are treated very badly, but now you have to treat them kindly as human beings. That is one. Then the other is the change of your way of thinking. That particularly that very important thing that happened two, three years ago. What happened was that the... Uh, the uh, idea of, um, you know, the homosexuality is to be punished. But that idea has now gone away. And you realize that it is something determinative, biologically determined. So you have progressed. So that is a social change, okay? A thing of action, a more rational dealing with our fellow men, okay? We have to be very, very kind to all the other levels of society fellow men and our environment. Environment also. We are making, modern man is making a mess of the environment. He is exploiting everything and making huge damage. Okay. Now we have become conscious of that, the climatic change, we have become conscious and we are trying. But still, many countries are not even accepting. For instance, the biggest country, the most industrialized country in the world, America, is not accepting that climate change is necessary. Strange, but that's a fact. Okay, because it will affect their way of living. So they don't accept it. So environment, then a better and more efficient citizenship okay? and discharge of duties. But discharge of duties also you can see doctors in India are very often assailed. Okay, it's happened many times. Okay, if the patient is not according to the customers, they are not taken care of properly, the doctor is attacked physically. Okay. So, discharge of duty should be allowed. That's what they're saying. Arrangement should be made so that everybody can discharge their duties correctly. A better, richer, kindlier, and happier way of living. There should be no poverty and there should be no um, 
There should be nothing to make your life miserable. That's what Sir Ji is saying. Kindlier and happier way of living. That we are trying. Every country is trying, and the policy is roti, kabra, makan. <laughs> All these three have to be provided to everybody, if that is possible. It's being done, but in a very slow manner. Okay. Then, next is with a more just and more harmonious associated enjoyment of the opportunities of existence. Whatever is there in the physical world, all should be available to everybody for enjoyment and entertainment. By others again, a more inner and subjective ideal is cherished. It's not a mundane ideal, but something more psychological, something more inner and subjective. Ideal is cherished, and what is that? That also there can be many gradations in that also. So one is. Clarifying and raising of the intelligence. People who are in the villages, they don't have access to hospitals and schools. So you have to but have a better education system so that the intelligence can be developed. Will and reason, a heightening and ordering of power and capacity in the nature, a nobler ethical, a richer aesthetic, a finer emotional. A much healthier and better governed vital and physical being. So, so I'm just using everything. That last one, for instance, a much healthier and better governed vital and physical being. This Ayushman, the policy of the government now is everybody should have proper medical facilities available to them. I don't know. It's called Ayushman Bharat or something. So poor people can claim that. Okay. So that's an attempt at a More healthy population. Then also he is saying, but also art, okay, aesthetic, richer aesthetic. Everybody must be able to have access to development of their capacities in the in the arts, sculpture, architecture, painting, music. All this should be there. This is the idea of the mundane perfection, but psychological perfection. Okay, so next. Sometimes one element is stressed almost to the exclusion of the rest. That's exactly what they usually the governments do. They do the most. The easiest thing is to improve their physical condition. Okay, so that's what is being said. Physical condition can be improved, and sometimes you develop only the other aspects. It depends on each nation. In any case, they are all. Maintain developments, even if it is psychological, it refers only to the physical world. Sometimes one element is stressed almost to the exclusion of the rest. Sometimes, in wider and more well-balanced minds, the whole harmony is envisaged as a total perfection. A change of education and social institutions is the outward means adopted, or an inner self-training and development preferred. As a true instrumentation. Now this is interesting. That's exactly what has happened in India. Okay, we had the ancient educational system, which was invented by the British, and that was only to produce clerks. So the it was a horrible thing. And now the new education policy has been to develop the intelligence, develop originality, develop your creative power. That's a new education policy. Okay, and it also applies for even increasing your love of country. Okay, they um, of course there's a lot of resistance to that new policy also, but change of policy so that a better education system can affect. Affect. I'm giving you examples of what I'm saying. A change of education social institutions is the outward means and outward for an inner self training. Okay, so. <laughs> In in India, we have got all these ashrams where the inner self training can go, on. and development is preferred as a true instrumentation, or the two aims may be clearly united. Which are the two aims? Psychological development as well as physical development. Okay, they have to be united. The perfection of the inner individual, the perfection of the outer level. Now you can go to the third one. He is still talking about the mundane aim. Okay, so Archana Di, if you have got the text, you can read. 
They're all small paras. Yes, Rangada, I'll read. Simadi, please switch off your video. It's disturbing. Yeah. Sima Mishradi, please but switch off your video. I think it's switch on by mistake. Simadi. Switch off your video. That's it. Correct. <laughs> But the mundane, extremely sorry, uh, extremely sorry. I was I, actually following the book, okay. I was not on the camera. Okay, okay, thank you, Didi. Thank you. If if I'm inaudible, please inform because I have some issues with my neck today, but right now I'm reading. But the mundane aim takes for its field the present life and its opportunities, the religious aim on the contrary fixes before it the self-preparation for another existence after that. Its commonest ideal is some kind of pure saint. It means a conversion of the imperfect or sinful human being by divine grace or through obedience to a law laid down by a scripture or else given by a religious founder. The aim of religion may include a social change, but it is then a change brought about by the acceptance of a common religious idea and way of. Okay, we can't hear you. But anyway, yeah. para is a very small para. Okay. So I'm reading each sentence of this para. So now Srinivas is saying yeah. a brotherhood of the saints reflecting on the kingdom of heaven. The paragraph ends here, it's okay. Yeah. Kingdom of heaven. That's the end of the para. So what Srinu is saying now, he comes from the mundane aim, he is saying now come to the religious aim. Okay. So but the mundane aim takes for its field the present life okay, and its opportunities. Okay? Present life only, only one life. But the religious aim, on the contrary, fixes before it the self-preparation for another existence after death. So you know that you have got a series of lives and you want to improve your inner uh, condition. So you accept that there are other lives and you prepare yourself for the next life. That's what I was saying. They say. Fixing before it the self preparation for another existence after death. Uh, maybe he is not talking of the um, rebirth, but if you are without a physical body and a physical mind and a physical vital, you are in the subtle planes. So you, are, you have to prepare yourself for that existence. Its commonest ideal is some kind of pure sainthood. Be as moral as possible. It means, it means a conversion of the imperfect and sinful human being by divine grace or through obedience to a law laid down by a scripture or else given by a religious founder. Why is he making a distinction? Because in India, it is scriptures and religious founder in Christianity and in, um, uh, in uh, Islam. It's a religious founder. So he's making a difference. In India, we have all scriptures and you have to follow the scriptures. So that is good enough. You can not commit sins. Okay, just be a good human being and prepare yourself. That's a religious aim. The aim of religion may include a social change. Okay, but it is then a change brought about by the acceptance of a common religious ideal and a way of consecrated living, a brotherhood of the saints, a theocracy or kingdom of God reflecting on earth in the kingdom of heaven. So some sort of change can come. You have a collection, brotherhood of the saints. Okay, So a theocracy or kingdom of God. So it's not only religious, but an improvement in the physical world also combined with religion. So this is the 
He has to tell you what is the mundane perfection. He has told us what is the psychological perfection in the mundane. And he has also told us what is this, the, uh, the religious ideal in the mundane. Okay. Now he comes to the synthetic yoga. Jasmine, so, you got the text you can read. Salai yes. <clears throat> you have the text? The, the, yeah, the object of our synthetic yoga must, in this respect too, as in its other parts, be more integral and comprehensive, embrace all these elements or these tendencies of a larger impulse, impulse of self-perfection and harmonize them or rather unify. And in order to do that successfully, it must seize on a truth which is wider than the ordinary religious and higher than the mundane principle. All life is a secret yoga, an obscure growth of nature towards the discovery and fulfillment of the divine principle hidden in her, which becomes progressively less obscure, more self-conscient and luminous, more self-possessed in the human being by the opening of all his instruments of knowledge, will, action, life to the spirit within him and in the world. Mind, life, body, all the forms of our nature are the means of this growth, but they find their last perfection only by opening out to something beyond them. First, because they are not the whole of what man is. Secondly, because that other something which he is, is the key of the completeness and brings a light which discovers to him the whole high and large reality of his being. And now, Srinath is giving a hint of what the aim of the perfection is, integral perfection, what it is. So he has told us three perfections, mundane perfection in the physical world, improvement of our justice system, improvement of our police system, improvement of education, and all these things. Improvement of the psychological condition of the human being, okay? Better sensitivity, better intelligence, better information technology, all these things were the second. Now then he has also dealt with the religious. Prepare yourself for the next life in the subtle words. Now he comes to the synthetic yoga and what is perfection meant in the synthetic yoga. I'm reading each sentence. The object of our synthetic yoga, not the word our, huh? It's very clear. It's not any yoga. Our synthetic yoga must, in this respect too, as in its other parts, be more integral and comprehensive. It must include all these that we had spoken about earlier. Embrace all these elements or these tendencies of a larger impulse of self-perfection and harmonize them or rather unify. Or And in order to do that successfully, it must seize on a truth which is wider than the ordinary religious and higher than the mundane principle. So he is not rejecting the mundane perfection and he is not rejecting the religious perfection either. But he is, we have to integrate these into the higher perfection that he is talking about. Then he is giving a huge statement, all life is a secret yoga. That means to say, we don't reject anything in life. We accept everything. Okay, All life is a secret yoga. An obscure growth of nature towards the discovery and fulfillment of a divine principle hidden in her, which becomes progressively less obscure, more self-conscient and luminous, more self-possessed in the human being by the opening of all his instruments of knowledge, will, action, life, with a spirit within him and in the world. So, huge sentence, we'll have to look at it carefully. So, an obscure growth of nature towards the discovery and fulfillment of the divine principle is what he means by evolution. Not evolution in the individual, but evolution in the physical world. Nature is evolution. That's why he's saying all life is a secret yoga. There's a 
by yogic evolution from matter has come life and from life has come mind so even without man this much has come but now with the advent of man the evolution can go much faster and nature will benefit by man's presence in the physical world <laughs> an obscure growth of nature it is obscure but now it can become less obscure that's what he's saying an obscure growth of nature towards the discovery and fulfillment of the divine principle hidden in her so in nature also nature includes matter life and mind and in matter is hidden sachidananda so that's a divine principle hidden in matter which becomes progressively less obscure so in the matter it is very obscure the divine principle is not even seen but when life comes in it becomes less obscure and you see oh there is a principle which is far superior to matter so it is less obscure because of man mind it becomes even less obscure okay more self conscious and luminous more self possessed what do i mean by self possessed control okay you can control yourself in nature there is no control the forces are acting without control okay? but in the human being some sort of control is possible by the opening how do you do that by opening all the instruments of knowledge will action life to the spirit within him and in the world so here also is giving you extra information the spirit is there in man but the spirit is there also in the world that's see the transcendent the cosmic and the individual okay so he is telling you instruments of knowledge instruments of knowledge first are the senses physical senses then there are subtle senses then there is a mind okay so all this. then the will the will is usually there's a location for the will but it can be a vital will it can be a mental will but the real will is in the psychic being action action is possible with the body life to the spirit within him and in the world mind life body all the forms of our nature are the means of this growth so the others are rejecting mind life body but we will not reject okay they are going to use these for our growth but they find their last perfection only by opening out to something beyond them he has told you this also that in life divine very clearly says mind life and body have the right to fulfillment self fulfillment but where can that self fulfillment be found not in themselves but by going above themselves he has said that in life divine okay so that's what he's saying here the last perfection only by opening out to something beyond them okay you have to go beyond body mind life first because they are not the whole of what man is secondly because that other something which he is see he is not forcing you to understand he is not telling you that is a psychic being or the self he is just giving it leaving it for you to discover okay so, because there other something which he is is a key of his completeness and brings a light which discovers to him the whole high and large reality of his being so this other something which he is he will specify later on okay so, is the key to his completeness so what he is saying is that mundane perfection is very good okay psychological perfection in the world is also very good even better religious perfection even one degree better but all these are in the mundane field but you have to now think of something which is not in the mundane field it has to go up and that would include the psychological perfection of man more complete psychological perfection okay. so how much time do we have we have 8 minutes we can read one more para mind is fulfilled now he is going to tell you what is the fulfillment of mind what is the fulfillment of vital and what is the fulfillment of the body okay so kiran if you have the text you can read yes ramada go ahead mind mind is fulfilled by a greater knowledge of which it is only a half light life discovers its meaning in a greater power and will of which 
it is the outward and as yet obscure functioning body finds its last use as an instrument of a power of being of which it is a physical support and material starting point they all they have all themselves first to be developed and find out their ordinary possibilities all our normal life is a trying of these possibilities and an opportunity for this preparatory and tentative self training but life cannot find its perfect self fulfillment till it opens <clears throat> to that greater reality of being of which by this development of a richer power and a more sensitive use and capacity it becomes a well prepared field of working so now he is defining to us what is the fulfillment in the interior yoga mind should be fulfilled vital should be fulfilled and also physical should be fulfilled they have a right to fulfillment this is not recognized by the other yogas they reject the body mind life so what is the fulfillment of mind knowledge greater knowledge okay that includes also spiritual knowledge but he is just leaving it as a vaguely as a greater knowledge not only physical knowledge of which is only a half life mind at present is half ignorant and half knowledge then so what would be the fulfillment mind full knowledge without ignorance that would be the fulfillment is it possible it is possible when you go beyond the mind then you come to the perfection of life okay you are vital what is it it has to become it has to get greater power and will so at present the life is it has power certainly but its power is very distorted and impure so it has to become perfect energy and it should have the possibility of pure enjoyment and power greater power as so will so that would be the fulfillment of the vital being a purification of the vital will lead to power as well as enjoyment the vital has a right to enjoy this idea is not very accepted by many huh? okay but the vital has the power to enjoy but enjoyment without ego without attachment without desire okay then finally we have the body so what would be the perfection of the body the self fulfillment a disease free body and if possible even death free body right and full of energy and full of all capacities that the physical body can do that would be the perfection of the body not perfection he is using the word fulfillment so they they all ha- they have all themselves first to be developed so whatever they are without spiritual development first of all develop the mind to its full capacity intelligence and flexibility of understanding that should be there then it can become spiritual vital also in the same way you the vital has to become sensitive to all art okay sensitivity of the vital recognition of sense of beauty this is an aesthetics that should be the perfect vital they have all themselves first to be developed and find out their ordinary possibilities not spiritual possibility ordinary possibility most people have not developed their mind life body fully and find out their ordinary possibilities all our normal life is a trying of these possibilities and an opportunity for this preparatory and tentative self training tentative tentative means groping you are not sure you are just trying to improve yourself in whatever way you understand it but life cannot find its perfect in self fulfillment till it opens to that greater reality of being of which by this development of a richer power and more sensitive use and capacity it becomes a well prepared field of work in other words mind life body have to go beyond themselves to have real perfection remaining in themselves they cannot have any perfection spiritual perfection is not possible first of all the mundane perfection of mind life and body has to be done then only can it go beyond itself so we have now only 3 minutes left so so the next one also is a very small one so we can read all these are all 
Shrinder is giving us the idea of perfection. He is taking us step by step. So, the next one, um, if uh, Shima is there and she has a text, she can read. Maybe she is not there. So, then who else? Who was not read? Everybody has read once, no? <laughs> okay, then we come back to one of you, okay? Jasmine, maybe you can continue and finish that small para. We got two yes. minutes. Yes, I'm reading. Go ahead. Intellectual, volitional, ethical, emotional, aesthetic, and physical training and improvement are all so much to the good but they are only in the end a constant movement in a circle without any last delivering and illumine, illumining aim. Unless they arrive at a point when they can open themselves to the power and patience of the spirit and admit its direct workings. This direct working effects a conversion of the whole being which is the indispensable condition of our real perfection. To grow into the truth and power of the spirit and by direct action of that power to be made a fit channel of its self-expression, a living of man in the divine and a divine living of the spirit in humanity will therefore be the principle and the whole object of the integral yoga of self-perfection. So, very small one. So, what he is saying, okay, it's already, so I'll just read out the summary of what he's saying. Okay? Development can be at many levels. All development of intellectual, volitional, ethical, emotional, aesthetic potentialities is very good. There is no doubt about it. Very good. But it is a horizontal development not a vertical one. It's not going outside itself. It leaves one at the same level, circling in the same field, without climbing to the higher next plane. That ascent can occur if the sadhaka opens himself to the power and presence of the spirit and lets it operate within himself, then and lets it operate within himself the needed transformation. So, the aim of the integral yoga is to grow and live in that greater spiritual truth and power of the divine. That is the integral self-perfection. So what is it? In simpler words, you reach the divine and live like the divine. Put on the divine nature. That's what is. That's the integral perfection. To reach God. Perfection in the physical world is fine. But that's not the integral perfection. Okay. So, we stop here today. Okay? And next time we'll go into the process of this change. Okay. Thank you, Rangada. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice, have a nice uh, uh, new month. Yes. <laughs>